very good morning to you. It is Wednesday and it is a holiday. It is Jamhuri Day. Make sure you let us know how you are celebrating Jamhuri Day. Our our handles on social media are at Y254 channel on Twitter. The hashtag is YKilisha, hashtag Y in the morning. On Facebook, we're at Y254. On Instagram, we're at Y254 underscore channel. And on YouTube, just in case you miss any of the valuable insight here, we're at Y254 channel. And it's about that time we delve into strength of a woman. And I will be standing in for Barry Moses. My name is Hilda Wadidi and we'll be discussing or rather we will be talking to a lady who is not only a founder of one, two, but a founder of quite a couple of companies. We have Miss Clean Domestic and Office Solutions Limited, Financial Freedom 254. She is a motivational speaker and entrepreneur and I just want her to say good morning to you, you know, and tell us her name, you know. All right. Thank you so much uh, once again uh, for here for myself today this morning and a happy 50th birthday Kenyans mm -hmm. together with us. Mm -hmm. My one thing about today is that independence is a mindset and mm -hmm. I believe that's what we're going to discuss here today. Mm -hmm. My name is Caroline Gina. Uh, mm -hmm. We run a cleaning company called Miss Clean Domestic and Office Solutions Limited mm -hmm. which is 10 years old mm -hmm. and this is a business that was started with no capital. I mm -hmm. believe we shall discuss that ab uh, about that uh, later. Especially that no yes. capital. That part. Yes. <laughs> and uh, Financial Freedom 254, which mm -hmm. is a money, uh, a school of money that mm -hmm. I'm very interested about because I love money and mm -hmm. I love looking for money mm -hmm. and getting it the right way. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a mentor because, of course, having come from a very humble background and mm -hmm. having gone through so many challenges in life mm -hmm. and having made it through, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then I thought it is very important for me to inspire other many youths. Mm -hmm. And I must say I'm born again mm -hmm. and I'm a church leader as well. This well, is my hallelujah. seven. Uh, <laughs> seven years serving uh -huh. in church mm -hmm. and serving in business forum where we have so many young people that have continuously been mentoring. Mm -hmm. And I'm currently writing a book about um, our best version of you, and that is living the best uh, space and best uh, things that you can do in your life and living not limiting the best version. version of you. Yes. It, it appears they have a lot <laughs> cut out for me today because I'm wondering what she has it all figured out. I don't even know what I'm going to ask you anymore. However, she did share with me something I found very interesting. So before we talk about independence and financial freedom and getting money the right way, I'd just like to understand. She told me that she that has not owned a TV for six Yes. And I'm just wondering, okay, why haven't you owned a TV? We are on TV and she's been on TV so many times over the years and you don't own a TV. Why? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I believe as much as uh, we want to enjoy life and live like every other person and mm -hmm. I believe a TV is like a standard procedure for almost every home. Mm -hmm. For me, I wanted something different. Mm -hmm. I wanted to excel. I wanted to become different. I wanted to succeed. And I had to look at my life and look at the things that I felt were dragging me behind and Ooh. were wasting my time. I don't have very much of influence, especially into my journey of success. Mm -hmm. And I knew TV was one of them. Oh, that yeah. is not to mean that TV is bad. Uh, TV is very good, mm -hmm. but sometimes you have no controls over the time that you spend on TV, mm -hmm. especially when you get home in the evening. Mm -hmm. You switch on that button even before you make your meal mm -hmm. and you realize that it's 9 p.m. before you've done anything <laughs> at home. And uh -huh. I needed to increase reading books. Mm -hmm. I needed to increase writing. I needed to increase on thinking about my business, especially right in the evening when mm -hmm. it's a bit cool and quiet because mm -hmm. I'm a night person. Mm -hmm. And I knew TV was not one of those th things that I needed to skip at home. Mm -hmm. So what I do, I catch up on online. Of mm -hmm. course, we have almost everything running online. Yes, you don't even need to watch the TV watch so much and anymore. Yeah. Every Kenyan watches TV while updating online. Yes. They start saying, this person has said this, this person has said that. And we can get all that information mm -hmm. at my right time mm -hmm. and ensuring that I spend the right time checking all the things that I need to check. So I'm always updated, not like I'm behind anything all just right. because I'm on, on TV. Okay, all right. Now that you are digital, it appears you're also uh, digital. Okay, very good. So we'd like to understand, when you founded this company of yours, when you discovered you really like money so much, I'd like to know what you studied, <laughs> what's the story behind it, how old were you when you founded this, and how come you never used any capital? Well, um, I started talking about money just the other day mm -hmm. when it showed up in my life. Mm -hmm. I didn't start because of money. Mm -hmm. I have a very humble background. Mm -hmm. I was born uh, by a teenager. Mm -hmm. She was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And she had to come back to Kenya. Well, I was born in Uganda. So mm -hmm. she had to come back to Kenya to study. Mm -hmm. So it meant I had, I met my own mother six years later. Mm -hmm. And I remember I thought she was my sister. 
For real? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I guess well, she hadn't quite aged that much. In, of course, at yeah. 15, and yes. I was born when she was 15. So she was definitely still in school when uh -huh. I was meeting her because she had just joined her. You're still in college. Yes. So that meant I had to grow with my grandmother. Mm hmm and uh, from that humble background and humble, humble beginning mm -hmm. life was not very easy and mm -hmm. we had to relocate of course back to kenya mm -hmm. and from makueni uh, locally of course in kenya Ooh, mm -hmm. yes <laughs> so uh fast forward mm -hmm. my mom had to struggle a bit to bring me up and mm -hmm. when i grew up and i was uh, of age mm -hmm. i was just clearing high school mm -hmm. i remember uh, growing up in high school, I had seen my grandparents doing business in Uganda, being mm -hmm. Kenyans and doing business in Uganda. Mm -hmm. So I was grown up thinking like an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So there was no space of thinking that I would be employed in any way from okay. the time I was from uh, scratch. Uh, from yes. scratch, yes. Mm -hmm. And actually, precisely when I was growing up, I was rearing chicken as a, ch as a child. Mm -hmm. And I had money in high school. I didn't need to ask for pocket money. Mm -hmm. I had my own money. I needed to make a decision that I need to sell this chicken and this one and this one and have some enough money for myself. Interesting. Yes. So this may be to parents at home. Uh, you need to know what you're teaching your children. True that. And you'll be surprised when they grow up. It will just automatically just grow in them. Mm -hmm. Because I even my first capital rather the first man that i came to nairobi with mm -hmm. that is 2002 after i cleared high school mm -hmm. it was money from proceeds from my chicken rearing you know business mm -hmm. uh again why i started cleaning business mm -hmm. i didn't think about money as such mm -hmm. because we didn't really have like plenty as such mm -hmm. but we had enough to just be comfortable mm -hmm. but i knew as i was growing up i was uh, mentored as well by my grandmother as a leader mm -hmm. because she pushed me to leadership even in in, uh, in sunday school i was a sunday school teacher Every time I'm in school, I'm also either a prefect, a monitor, or something. Are you still a Sunday school teacher by I'm any chance? I'm not a Sunday school teacher. <laughs> <laughs> As anyway. I said, I'm serving in church currently. Okay. And I'm leading a department called Business Forum. So I'm actually ah. still serving in church the same way. Okay. But, so bring a child the way you do want them to be when they grow up, and mm -hmm. they'll follow the same route, mm -hmm. actually. I have actually done the same. They taught me how to do business. Mm -hmm. I'm doing business. Mm -hmm. They taught me how to be a church leader. I'm still a church leader right mm -hmm. now. They taught me how to be independent and create solutions for mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm doing at Miss Clean. Mm -hmm. So why Miss Clean was started with no capital, it's because I started at an early age. I think I was 23. You were 23. I was going to ask about the name, Miss Clean. Miss Clean. Yeah. I do <laughs> Miss Clean. Miss Clean. I was 23 mm -hmm. and I was just completing uh, college. So mm -hmm. I must say I never did. I re did my research work halfway. Mm -hmm. The rest of it was doing business uh, business plan for Miss Clean. Oh, you could not be contained. <laughs> eh? You just had to I go. could not be contained. Uh -huh. I knew what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And why I was so settled for cleaning, it's because also I grew up with a clean freak grandmother. I don't know anyone if anyone has a clean freak Parents. oh i do anyway. yes <laughs> where we breathe cleanless mm -hmm. and everything is dirty like i'm just sitting here and i can tell a few things that need to be done to <laughs> <laughs> okay. taken care of and we had white linen all over mm -hmm. like everyone's had uh, to spend on i mean our beddings were white linens mm -hmm. and we had to clean even in up country you know the way the sufurias have white black suits? Yes. These ones used to carry, imagine to go to clean them in the river every hey. Saturday. Hey. I know that kind of lifestyle. So it was just in me that I loved cleaning. Mm -hmm. And I started doing research towards cleaning. Mm -hmm. And where I got Miss Clean M is because I used to do Google a lot. Mm -hmm. For young people right now growing up, you're so privileged. Mm -hmm. Then when I was starting Miss Clean, there was no single cleaning company that had a website in Kenya. I see. So they had not all gone digital no at that time. Digital. Like now one way, one all way, of them. perfect. None ah. of them had gone digital. Hi, yeah. So I had to rely on uh, companies in the UK. So I spotted several companies that I kept on reading about them. Mm -hmm. And that's how I, I saw a Mrs. Clean. Mm -hmm. And I thought I can do a Miss Clean, which just stands out. <laughs> and over the years, let me tell you, it's become a brand. And it's like the best decision, best name I ever chose for my cleaning company. Great. Because anytime you hear about Miss Clean, mm -hmm. you can tell that it's a cleaning company. Okay. Yes. So I'm seeing you have a passion for cleanliness and oh, finance. Yes. So I'd like to understand <laughs> when you did, are you, not only have you formed a company, Financial Freedom 254 for Kenyans, mm -hmm. But you also do a lot of charity work, I can see. Yes. Yes, can you please tell us about that? Orphan children, vulnerable children, why the interest in helping the needy? Okay, um, I, I was, I can say um, I grew up as an average Kenyan. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really like in a rich home, mm -hmm. neither were we that 
mm -hmm. poor. Yeah. But my grandmother taught me stuff to do, how to how to just be careful with how to spend things and how you use things. Mm -hmm. And then she was a giver. Mm -hmm. I say, as we're talking about the strength of a woman, I must say, most of the things that I do today, I learned them from my own grandmother. Mm -hmm. She was illiterate. Mm -hmm. But she, the things she did was beyond even being, having gone to school. Mm -hmm. She was running a, a, a business in a foreign country, meaning mm -hmm. she had to speak another language. Mm -hmm. And she was also able to manage her own finances, her own business, mm -hmm. without any education at all. So for her, for, so for, so every time you looked at her, you were like, this like, is superwoman. Super, superwoman. Uh, yeah. And then she used to help the poor and the needy in our, in our village. Mm -hmm. This is what she used to do. She would buy fabrics, mm -hmm. of, you know, she'd buy fabrics in the market mm -hmm. and sit down and sew that, fa cut the fabric and sew it into clothes. Mm -hmm. She would make dresses, shorts, shirts. Mm -hmm. And then on Saturdays, she would mm -hmm. invite most children that were f from poor mm -hmm. families to our home would work with them mm -hmm. and that's one thing she told me that you don't earn from nothing mm -hmm. you have to work yes so she would work with these kids from our family mm -hmm. uh, at our family uh, on a saturday so it wasn't really just giving them like Not they, had to, they, they had, they had to, to make to sure that they earn that so that they don't us. take it for granted yes and in ah. the evening they would uh, they would be told of course to take a shower because some of them are not very clean <laughs> so take a shower then in return they'll be given now like um, uh, clean clothes in the name of giving back to them. Ah, but she didn't give as okay. if she's helping them. She'd mm. give as if she's just uh, making sure that they go home with clean clothes because they're already clean. Empowering. Empowering and she them. likes cleanliness. cleanliness. <laughs> and then we, uh, our family, uh -huh. I was used to many times, would have women come home to ask for food mm -hmm. because they would say they, their children, you know, they didn't have something to eat for the previous night. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother was a very hardworking farmer. So we had food like all through. Mm -hmm. And most of it she never used to sell. She would only give to you know uh, other families okay. so to me giving was instilled in me when i was growing up mm -hmm. and i didn't start giving back when i was already having money mm -hmm. i started giving back even when i did not have any mm -hmm. my first person that i gave back to was mm -hmm. a young lady called uh, juliana mogure she's from meru mm -hmm. i picked her from my jungle slum mm -hmm. but then she was just like a young girl and i took her back to primary school she went to class eight and uh no, class 7 and class 8 mm -hmm. because she had dropped a long time ago. She didn't have parents. Mm -hmm. And she was also sleeping in a very bad house, you know, a mud house that was rainy and yeah. she didn't have food stuff. How did you so come across Julian? I was volunteering mm -hmm. at uh, an organization called St. John's Community Center. Mm -hmm. After 19, actually after high school, I just went straight to volunteer in that organization. Goodness gracious, you know, I just want to, I just want to end this so that you don't kill the holiday for people at home now. But oh, now the mothers are going, oh, <laughs> I see, okay. Oh, but anyway, carry on. Yes, so uh -huh. I went to volunteer. So while I was volunteering, mm -hmm. this girl was one of the Actually, she was in the streets program. Oh, uh -huh. so I kind of loved her, mm -hmm. and I saw strength and potential in her, mm -hmm. and I thought I could work with her. I was still a child then who could call me the same because mm -hmm. at nineteen, twenty, I was still just yes, a young person. More or less, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I was. Uh, I started staying on my own at twenty-one. So mm -hmm. I told her I have some place, a very small place that mm -hmm. we can live together. Mm -hmm. So that I, mo I, I moved her into my place. And I took her to school, and I remember I would just give her. Wait, like, can you describe your first house? Let's talk about <laughs> that space with your cleanliness uh, and and all your your spec uh, specifications. Was it a bed sitter? How was how, was how no did you organize shy. yourselves, the two of you? <laughs> I actually, didn't start with that. I started by living in a slum. You started in the slum. Yes, I moved in with a lady friend of mine who was staying in a slum, and it's because I just wanted to start my life afresh. We had the, we were having challenges with my own mother then, and um, having not lived with her for so long, and this is actually something that maybe parents need to note. Mm. If you don't build a relationship with your child when they are young, yeah. when they are teenagers, or even when they are growing old, mm -hmm. they will never have a relationship with you. It will just be a struggle through. I know. So I actually struggled to build a relationship with my own mother because we only started staying with her when I cleared high school. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you know, as a teenager, I was just feeling like she's too much on me. And I felt like she had already failed. And I can actually do it on my own. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to start on my own. So where I want to live, I want to live with someone. That in is a, a big risk. You know, many <laughs> girls, especially <laughs> like me, like we are so scared of taking such kind of risk. I know. I'm actually most people that I hey. have their story who moved out of their homes. Most of them either moved in with men. Yes. Or either found, you know, some t doing drugs or looking yes. for a, a, a Because you can't imagine <laughs> going to the slum, my God. And actually, I should say that's the time I started doing cleaning. Okay. You know Mama Fua, where mm -hmm. you just go to clean someone's home? Yes. One or two homes yes. in a day or two? Yes, yes. That's where I started, actually. 
Oh, that's God. where Miss Clean was born. Miss mm-hmm. Clean was not born glamorously. Uh-huh. It was run from that place because I desire to make money of my own. Mm-hmm. And apart from the days that I was volunteering at Sandy Jones because we didn't have money there, mm-hmm. I had two days that I would go to clean people's homes mm-hmm. and I would earn one home, I would earn a thousand bob, the other home I would earn 350 shillings. Mm-hmm. So with that man, that's how I started now being able to pay my rent mm-hmm. with my friend that I was staying with, which was, we would share, it was 1500, so we would share 750 each one. Mm-hmm. But I was tired. I didn't want to live there. Uh-huh. So I moved now to my first house in mm-hmm. Isili, mm-hmm. uh, some place, uh, Section 3. Mm-hmm. And my first house was 2,500 shillings. I moved in only a mattress and a stove and I think one sufuria. You know those basic things? Yes. And I was just sleeping on the floor. Oh, God. You know, I'm, I'm so challenged right now because I, I'm like, God, no. <laughs> Guys. Yeah. But, okay, okay, okay. That's very interesting. I would like us to have a second opportunity to have this conversation because it's about time we conclude this yes. segment. And I'm so moved by your story, to be honest. And I'd like to understand, uh, where can people find you if they would like to read more about you? Well, I am on Facebook and I write a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Facebook, I'm Caroline Gina. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also have a Facebook page as mm-hmm. a company, Miss mm-hmm. Clean Domestic and Office Solutions Limited, which mm-hmm. I continuously keep on giving my story. Yes. And especially the story of how we started uh, yes. the company. It's and very I'm important very because important. many young people have a lot of excuses nowadays. <laughs> I also feel like I have been really giving myself a lot of excuses. Yes. And mm-hmm. I'm on Instagram as mm-hmm. well as Caroline Gina. Mm-hmm. That's how you can find me. And of course, on Twitter, Caroline mm-hmm. Gina as well. I would. Yes. I, w- I really wanted to ask you how you got your debut into the media, f- f- coming from such a background. <laughs> how did you land on TV? Let me just ask you that one last time before we go. Uh, you know, when you start doing good things, yes, and you're busy excelling mm-hmm. and supporting others and giving back, yes. people look for you. Wow. I never looked for any TV person. Uh-huh. I just started getting, you know, people just asking to cover my story. Okay. So there I have done quite a lot of them. You know, the Entrepreneur Show. Yes. Uh, by Kobe Kiara Better Living. Yes. I've done, of course, uh, KBC. I've done several TV yes. shows. Mm-hmm. And up to today, I don't go looking. Wow. Yes. Um, I'm recommended, of course, when I do one, I'm recommended to another. You know, show. you have reminded me of a scripture that we usually take for granted a lot. You yes. call the hand that gives never lacks. Never Indeed. Lacks. Yes. Yes. I've seen that story from you. And thank you so much for joining us, Caroline Gina. Yes, yes, yes. You have been watching Strength of a Woman with Caroline. Yes. Yes. Please don't go anywhere. Valentine is coming up next with Woman Crush Wednesday, which is Girls Talk. So don't go anywhere. Joy Muchacha will also be there. She's made her debut today for joining the Y in the Morning team for the first time. Yes, so make sure you do catch up with Joy Muchache at Valentine or at Kalami Val on social media platforms. And my name is Hilda Wadidi. Please do not go anywhere. Caroline will be back. I have to make sure that you come back so that you tell us properly. I've already touched myself. It's been a minute since I got touched by somebody's story. But thank you so much for coming today. Have a blessed Jamhuri Day. And you guys, don't go anywhere. It's Jamhuri Day. Tell us what you are doing. Slide into our social media handles, as I had mentioned earlier and let us know how your day is going. Hiya.